winding down with our Be On Air Forum. Uh, the Be On Air Forum, if you're just joining us, is um, one of our initiatives from the Be On Air Network of Media Schools, which includes Ohio Media School, Illinois Media School, Colorado Media School, and Miami Media School. And the intention of the program is really to offer continuing education to our students, to our alumni, and to our professional network. We are so very, very happy for the many of you who have joined us throughout the entire year. And we will have one more session after we wrap up with the ladies tonight. It will be on December 5th. And at that point, uh, we'll be introducing one of the stars of Tyler Perry's uh, Pea Valley show. And she's gonna be talking about some remote internship opportunities. So mark your calendar, that's gonna tie up our year. But for right now, we are so very excited to bring you two of our outstanding alumni from Illinois Center for Broadcasting. Actually, they they predate Illinois Media School. Each of them brings, right, and look at how young they are. They're so young, but <laughs> they do predate that current name, which most people do, but in any event, they each have 20 years of experience in the radio and, and for Krista, both radio and TV industry. And ironically, they both wind up working for the same company right now, Midwest Family uh, Broadcasting and Marketing. And it's just so ironic. In my role as National Employer Relations Representative, I have an opportunity to meet so many of our wonderful alumni who choose to come and spend some time with our students and graduates and our group that um, comes here to gather and to share their insight and, and the things they've learned along the way, um, maybe some great tips for you to get started. And the topic that we chose for tonight is really radio looks a lot different, right? It's not just your mom and dad's radio anymore. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who are looking to make your way into the radio industry, these two women have a plethora of information to share with you and great experiences. We're going to um, turn them over to our moderator, Philip Bufford, who is here with us. He is our career service director out of our Cincinnati campus of Ohio Media School. Um, Philip brings a tremendous amount of experience, both on air as well as he's a script writer and a movie writer, and he has his own magazine and just a super cool guy with a lot of insight and the perfect moderator to move us along in the hour so that we can all gain tremendous insight. So just a little bit of housekeeping before I turn over. For those of you who are with us live, there is a chat option, which you could see at the top of your screen. Please feel free to put your questions inside. Huda is here with me and, and we'll be moderating together with Philip to be able to get your questions asked. If you're watching us on YouTube, we're so happy that you joined us there. And to be aware that we have many, many installments of the Be On Air Forum, and we'd love for you to learn with us by watching and subscribing. So how was that? That was a few quick minutes. And now without further ado, there is Philip, and Philip is really precise on that stopwatch. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Linda, you know how to put a lot of pressure on somebody. A lot of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome everyone to the Be On Air Forum. Uh, my name is Philip Buffett. I'll be your host uh, and moderator for this conversation. We have two lovely ladies here, professionals in the industry. I think between the three of us, I think we have over 60 years of experience just on this screen right now. <laughs> so cool. yeah, that's, that's a lot. That's a lot going on right here. So to everyone, welcome. Uh -huh. And uh, we have Lisa Tyler, who is here. How are you doing, Lisa? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. My pleasure. And then we have Krista Hatcher. How are you doing today? Hi, I'm great. Thank you. All right. So what we're going to do, just a little housekeeping, just to remind, if you have any questions for everybody out there, what I'd like you to do is write that question in the chat. And what we're going to do is periodically jump into the chat, uh, pull, give you the opportunity to ask your question, housekeeping. When you have the opportunity to ask your question, make sure you ask your question and then stop talking so that our guests can have the time to answer it. You have an opportunity to have one follow-up. 
uh, to that question. And again, just ask the follow up. Stop talking so our guests can have the opportunity to talk. We want to make sure everybody has the opportunity. And so we have an hour. Well, actually 56 minutes. So let's just jump into it right now. So Lisa, Krista, you guys, both of you have been doing this between the two of you over 40 years. So let's talk about what it is that you exactly do. So Lisa, I'm going to give you the floor. And then after Lisa, Krista, you have the floor. All right. Um, so for many years, the majority of my career, um, 15 years of that was doing um, mornings. So I was a morning co-host. That's the whole reason I got into radio to begin with. Um, and then um, was approached by a former teacher at Illinois Center for Broadcasting who said, you know what, I think it's time for you to move into management and told me about a program director um, or now brand manager, I think is what we're mostly called, right? <laughs> Um, position uh, available in the Rockford market. And at first I kind of got a little nervous and thought, no, I don't think I'm ready to move. My daughter and I, um, at that time, it's about an hour and a half away. Um, I thought, I don't think we're, I'm ready to, to do that yet. And maybe I want to stay in mornings. And so I kind of sat on it for a couple of months and the job was still available. And just like all things, when you know you're ready, you just know. And I woke up one morning and I'm like, you know what, I think I'm ready to, to make the move. So um, about four and a half years ago, I ended up reaching back out and ended up getting the job. So now I'm a brand manager in Rockford, Illinois for B103, which is um, an 80s to now uh, station. Fantastic. How do you see? Fantastic. And now, Krista, you have the floor. Oh, thank you. Um, just like Lisa, I as well have uh, been doing morning uh, show radio for the past 15 years. Um, I love it, so much fun. And, you know, as far as uh, also uh, currently, the last few months, I moved on to midday host uh, for Magic 98 out here in Madison, Wisconsin. Um, I also am a TV host here locally for an all women's um, show called Wisconsin Women, where we uh, we interview uh, clients locally, so it's it's a lot of fun. And um, just like with Lisa, uh, you know, it's it's just fabulous to be around other. Uh, like I told her, she is a lady boss, especially being you know a brand manager and program director. Uh, that's 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 the, it right there. So it's just it's great. It's it's great to do what we love to do and just to be ourselves. So it's fun. Yes, agree. Fantastic. So the, both of you are now doing, as you, as Krista, you just said, you, you're doing something you love to do. Uh, we've got over 35 people that are watching and more people are going to be coming in. So what is, just to give a picture of people who want to do what you're doing, what is a day in your life look like? Krista, I'm going to give you the floor and then we're going to pivot over to Lisa. Well, my life has changed significantly and not having to get up at four in the morning. So <laughs> I'm loving that um, you know what I mean? um, because I am a mom. Uh -huh. So, you know, waking up, getting my daughter ready for school. She's 12. But, um, you know, it's it's a, it's a lot of fun. I get up, I get ready, bring her to school. And then, you know, I'm, I'm off to to work and, you know, getting ready for the show is something that, you know, show prep is something really important that we all know. Um, and, and checking my socials and seeing what is going on uh, before I get started to, you know, put that mic on. Um, it's, it's important to know what is going on when you're going, you know, into your show, especially with the news and you never know if something big is happening or, um, you know, what's the biggest in, you know, celebrity gossip or so, yeah, it's, it's getting that ready. And then, you know, once your show, like, so many others, you know, it's not just that that you do, you, you work on, you know, podcasts or, you know, commercials and things like that. Is it different being a TV personality as a, as opposed to when you are a radio personality? Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, you know, radio to me is like everything because you're allowed to be who you are, where TV, it's a little bit more scripted and um, so I always thought being in radio, you know, you get to be yourself. So it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Fantastic. Lisa, you have the floor. What does a day in your life look like? Well, typical day. Um, so I also have a daughter who's 14. 
Um, I'm a single mom, so it's just me and her here in the morning. Um, so I get her up, make sure she's set and on the path to be on time for school. Cause you know, I'm running on her time. Um, and then I'm set up where I, I also am on middays. So I have a setup in my bedroom and after I make sure she's, um, she's good to go. I record my midday show, um, voice track right from my bedroom and get myself ready and drop her off at school. And then I head into the station, um, and, I schedule music and uh, um, plan promos and come up with sales opportunities and write promos. I mean, every day is every day is different. Like, I'm sure Krista can attest to this. You you think you're you think you have an outline of what your day is going to look like, and then you walk in and you don't pretty much you don't do anything that you have on your outline. Um, for the most part, yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm still actively yeah recording commercials. Um, producing, you know, uh, promos and stuff like that, doing a lot of prod work, um, managing my staff and, you know, there's little last minute things and little fires that happen with them that you got to put everything aside and, 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 and put out. Um, and then usually try and come home around the time that my daughter gets home from school. And, um, usually there's some housekeeping that I have to do on the couch while her and I watch TV and she does homework. So we kind of have homework time together, <laughs> but I'm trying to, I'm trying to be better about the home work life balance. You know, it's really hard. Understandable. So yeah. all of us know that 2020 has drew a line in the sand and changed a lot of things in media. Lisa, you said something that's really important. You said that you record your midday show from mm -hmm. home in yes. your bedroom as opposed to once upon a time you probably were in a station doing it yeah so how has that how has that 2020 year changed what you do in media well like you said yeah um i used to kind of partially be live and record depending on how my day was um i would go into the station and do all of that um but yeah covid forced everybody to be able to do everything from home um, so it just works out better for my schedule to, I feel bad saying this, get that part out of the way. I mean, that is the whole reason we got into radio was the whole on-air thing, but being a program director, there's just so many other things that I have to do. I, I don't have time to be in the studio for four hours and do a live show. Um, especially scheduling music just takes, takes a long time and I want to do a good job at that. So, um, so I want to leave time for that. Um, so it is, it is a blessing and a curse because we can do everything at home. It is nice to have that flexibility, but then at the same time, it's also hard to shut your laptop down because you can just keep on working. And I, you know, I can literally do everything I can load. Um, I can get into our prod room from home and I can load promos into the system and I, I can do literally everything from home. Um, but obviously I need to be there to see people and brainstorm and share ideas and stuff. So it's important to have FaceTime, obviously, but um, but it's also nice to have the flexibility to do everything from home. Nice. Krista, how has it changed it for you? Well, during the time I was hosting mornings and um, I was actually going in every, every day, um, you know, with COVID, obviously we lost uh, people. Uh, so you ended up, uh, putting on more hats. So I lost my producer. So I ended up producing the show as far as um, segments that I had with uh, guests. You know, I had a Mad Town Mom Squad podcast that was going on. I had all those ladies that were my co-hosts on the phone. So everything that would have been in studio was now only on the phone. So that was um, something that was real different. And, you know, just with the world changing, you know, how can we, you know, touch our community in ways that they're being affected. So I think our whole mentality of like entertainment changed um, and how we, yeah. you know, talk to our, our listeners. Yeah. Well, we actually, um, you reminded me of something, Krista, um, myself, and then my morning team, we did uh, a, a zoom show or stream yard show called B103 at home. So once a week, we would do a half hour show and just talk and we'd have different topics and um, our listeners would ask questions and stuff and broadcast that live on Facebook. So that was a way yeah. to, 
you know, um, keep in touch while we weren't doing remotes and stuff like that. Yeah. And I remember during that time too, we all then started going to like Instagram. We started doing like lives oh, with yeah. um, artists. Remember like that's the only way we could communicate with them. Yeah. You know? So yeah. yeah. <laughs> it seems so long ago now. <laughs> I know. So, and it's fun, so funny that you say it, cause you know, it was only to almost two years ago. Uh, but now, now on the other side of uh, being on 2020, what is your, what is your day like now? And because of all of the things that we've had to do, uh, have we now, what's the word, evolved what we do in media after 2020, uh, since 2020? I think for, um, you know, we're, we're so much more now um, being seen more than ever than being heard. Even it's even more important now that people see us. It was like our way of like communicating with everyone, um, with everyone being at home. So social media has definitely um, taken a high rise to, to showing that platform and, you know, also with podcasting just blowing up. Yeah, 100%. I totally agree. I used to like, not really, I loved radio for the fact that I didn't have to be on camera. And I even, I even hated it when people FaceTimed me. Um, I'd be like, what are you, what is going, why are you FaceTiming me? You know, now I become so much more comfortable being on camera um, and doing videos and stuff like that um, for the radio station. It's just, it's so important that that has definitely become way more important after COVID for sure. So I'm, I want to pivot to this because I see there's dialogue happening in in the uh, in the chat. So I want to make sure I pivot to it. So Tasha, I saw that you said something. So if you have an open personality, do you feel like a person would fit better in radio versus television when first starting out? So Tasha, I know you have that question. I'm going to open up the floor for you. You want to give 30 seconds of context to what I just read. Tasha? No, Tasha. Okay. Oh. <laughs> so, can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Oh. Is that Tasha? Okay. Yeah. So, I would just wanted to know like, okay, so me personally, I'm a student, current student at Ohio Media School. Uh, my focus is RTB. And I am just like a all around people person. So, I just wanted to know like, somebody starting out, if they wanted to start off, do you think that? The radio would be better, like as far as, like she said, personality wise, you can be yourself. Television is more scripted. So, or do you say, don't let that limit you go for whatever you feel like you should go for? I mean, I would say go for, you know, go for both, mm -hmm. you know? Um, what So, what kind of TV are you interested in? Um, I don't know. I just always see myself in the limelight as a child, and I don't know. I'm versatile to everything. I could be on a game show or something like that. Uh, right? I don't know. I'm just excited about the whole experience. So just to hear you all talk, it just makes me think like maybe one day I could be somewhere on 2020 interviewing people. For sure. Well, the, the great thing, too, is, you know, I fell into TV doing radio. Um, so it was just, you know, a, a fun way for me to be seen and and definitely you should do both for sure and you know you being able to like if you wanted to do some sort of like personality driven show i mean you getting out on youtube will be also a huge platform for you so like lisa said i mean definitely do everything that you can to to be seen and heard um it's just gonna even make you a better like you know someone to be like yeah let's let's see who this person is and like how we were saying that radio isn't just, you know, in, in a room locked up with a mic anymore. Um, we're on TikTok and do, you know, Instagram live, like Krista said. So if you get a job in radio, um, your, let me tell you, your, if you came to your boss and said, Hey, I want to do some sort of personality show on TikTok or Instagram, they'd be like, uh, yes, yeah. <laughs> you're hired. Um, do that. Cause that's the whole influencing thing, um, is so huge. And someone willing to do that is just really attractive to a program okay, director. Thank I thank y'all for that. Yes, I do. 
sucking everything to bring out my personality. So I thank you guys for that. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Tasha. Let's go over to Gabrielle Taylor. Gabrielle Taylor, you have the floor. You have a question in the chat. Go ahead and ask your question, Gabrielle Taylor. Hi. Yeah, I just wanted to know what the biggest difference in radio that you guys have noticed, whether that's on air or on the production side, or like with social media, like how has that influenced your jobs? Just how, like, what's the biggest difference between the past and now? Um, I would say, um, Krista kind of touched on this too. Um, back in the day, it was even 10 years ago, um, maybe even five years ago, you know, you pretty much did your show and that was it for the most part. Maybe you had a couple, maybe you had a promo meeting, maybe you had um, a meeting as far as show prep. And that was pretty much it. But now um, you have your on-air part. Um, you're probably writing blogs. You're writing content. Um, you're doing the video type podcasting shows. Um, there, there's just so many other facets that you're that you're doing. Um, that's the biggest thing that has changed, as far as I'm concerned. How about you, Krista? Yeah, I totally agree uh, with Lisa. Um, and you know like many personalities today on air are doing way, way more than they ever did. There's, there's so many other things that they're doing outside of just like Lisa said, their on air shift. Um, either if that's in promotions, like she said, either, or you're like hands on with the social media or mm -hmm. you're part of the website team or yeah, there's just many different things that go on and you always want to make sure you learn everything for sure. And Gab Gabrielle, you have a beautiful, um, beautiful radio name already so you're set <laughs> thank you so much thank you thank you so much uh oh did i lose okay there i'm back um so for people that have questions make sure that you put your question in the chat so that we can call on you um it looks like we have robert is it baller let me get close to it um but like her i think i'm i think i just slaughtered your name but robert <laughs> Go ahead and ask a question. Robert. Robert Baliker. Did I say it right? Baliker. Baliker. Are you there, Baliker. Are you there Robert? Hi, good evening, guys. How are you doing? Uh, my name is Robert, and uh, I have radio experience, but not in this country. I emigrated to the United States six years ago, and I want to go, go back to the beast. So I would like some guidance from you. Please. Huh. Um. <laughs> <laughs> question? I just want to know is like uh, is uh, a license is required. I know that uh, radio is uh, like worldwide and internet and everything. But uh, as I mentioned, I, I worked for seven years. I did commercials. I had the radio show for seven years too. It was like a documentary show. But uh, I wanted to go back in the business in here. I speak Spanish too, and I also speak English, but I, I would need some guidance. I would imagine that you would definitely be hireable being bilingual mm -hmm. for sure. Um, but you, yeah, you don't need, I mean, the, the license thing, maybe you guys can help out. I mean, that hasn't been around for a long, long time, right? Yeah. I would yeah. say if you're interested in going back, going back to your country and working, then you get got to get connected to the radio stations in your country. And the same thing that you do here in the States where you apply for positions, have your demo reel ready, have your resume ready is the same thing that applies in any other country. Yeah. All right. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you're you. welcome. So uh, that was not. I'm sorry, that was not Robert. Um, Robert, did you want to step up to the mic? Uh -huh. That's funny. <laughs> okay, he might be having mic problems. Move on. Okay. Okay. Um, Thank you. Let's go to Holly. Holly. Or Hi. Holly. Hi. <laughs> I am a brand, social media brand manager for the Beyond Air Network, and I am also a former student of two programs. And my question to you, and in this, this I, I love to kind of get your take on this because it's important, is can you explain the importance of social media to your career? Huge. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> yeah, absolutely humongous. Um, that, you know, I hate to say, like, I feel like, you know, we get more people signing up for our contests that we post on social media than just from what we, you know, promote on air. Um, for instance, um, so right now we're doing a Christmas donation drive for this um, crisis nursery um, in the town that I live in. And we had been putting out on air, uh, my morning show made a fun goal, like once we reach $200, this will happen. And it was kind of trickling along. And then they did a Facebook Live and um, explaining the fun challenge they were going to do and if they could reach $200. And they reached the $200 in like a matter of three hours from being on Facebook. It's just, you, you're not going to escape it. Yeah, Facebook is <laughs> or social media is huge. Also, social media is now the new platform for you to make some more money, honey. So uh, <laughs> um, yeah. an example, I just got hired to do influencing for Quick Trip and their way of, um, of picking someone was having all the personalities go on out to their local Quick Trip and doing a, an audition with a video. So they wanted to see how you were in front of people through like um, through video. So that's just a way for, again, for influencer packages, for them to sell you to clients. So it's just a, you make more money too. Are you doing, are you doing live and are you doing endorsements during your show too? And on, um, yeah. on social media or just yeah. one way? Oh, okay. Both. both yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Not to interrupt, but can you hear right, me now? Thank you. thank you so much. Uh, let's go to Joel. Joel, it looks like. Dusik. Dusik, you got it, yeah. Joel Dusik, yes. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you very much, and I appreciate the uh, opportunity for you guys to open this up to alumni as well. I was in the first graduating class of the Ohio Center for Broadcasting Colorado campus back in uh, 2001, so uh, mm -hmm. it's been a while. I worked a little bit after graduating uh, in radio and in um, doing production and have done some voiceover work, but it's been a while now. So I'm wondering what you might recommend to getting back in the business, uh, updating skills. Uh, obviously podcasting is huge now and the socials uh, that we didn't have back then, you know, we're not doing mini discs and uh, VHS tapes anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, so what would you recommend maybe for folks to get back into the business after a, a relatively long hiatus? Networking, I mean, um... I think that's so huge right now, networking, trying to just, uh, you know, reach out to anyone that you see that's a part of this world. Um, you know, I think one of the best places that someone can go and you don't even have to be in morning show is morning show boot camp that's been going on mm -hmm. for what, Lisa, 20 A long time, years, yeah. Maybe. yeah. Yeah. And that's just a great avenue for you to meet so many people in this industry that are looking um or middays are looking for morning show people are looking for producers. Um, that's a great avenue. Okay. Yeah. I would suggest in your demo, um, you know, instead of just like talking up songs that was this is or whatever, you know, um, pretend that you are influencing something, um, you know, uh, something like that, maybe even accompany it, accompany it with a video type thing. Um, an endorsement, you know, just, just mock something up, something like that to show that you have more than, you know, you're more than just the talking up songs. Right. So really kind of push it from that social media angle, uh, as opposed to, uh, what it used to be in broadcasting. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Joel. Thank you. So we've got more questions. Um, reminder, everyone, when you ask a question, make sure you just ask a question. We've got 30 minutes and we've got a lot of people that have questions. We're going to make a pivot for a moment and we're going to talk about uh, starting from the beginning. You are successful. Uh, Krista, you, you're a show. Uh, you have the Krista in the Morning Rush. It was an award winning show and Lisa, I mean, you went from being on air personality to becoming a program uh, manager. What was it like for you getting started? Lisa, I'm going to give you the floor. <laughs> OK, um, well, I wanted to be in radio pretty much my entire life since I was like eight years old. 
Um, and then when it came time to graduate high school, for some reason, I kind of freaked out and thought, you know what, there's not many jobs in radio and I feel like I need something more broad. So I went to Illinois State University and just chose communications and did that and did a little at the ISU radio station. Um, but it, it didn't really inspire the, it, going to that larger school. There's just so many other things going on um, that when I just did my shift and that was it. Like no one really inspired me to do any more with it, you know? Um, so I ended up graduating with my communications degree and then moved to Chicago and, and worked in just like a data entry office space type situation. And during those couple of years, I just in the back of my head, I would be listening to morning radio and the Chicago morning radio. And I'm like, I have to do this. I have got to be in radio. I cannot do this data entry stuff anymore. Like this, this is my calling. And I, I tried to squish it and it did not work. So, um, right away, I'm not even sure I must've gone online. Yeah, it was 2000, 2001 and, uh, gone online and then found the Illinois center for broadcasting. And I went to the Lombard campus and, um, is that where you went to? Yes. Oh, so what year did you graduate? When? Um, 2002. Okay. So I, yeah. Okay. So I started June 02 and then I graduated March 03. And I did nights. When did you start Krista? Yeah. So I, I, I had just finished then in 2002. Okay. So we so just, just a year. Oh, that's, that's nice. so back then it was just a 10 month program. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'll tell you, you know, I did that four-year school and not, not to not going to a four-year school. I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't mass communication, so I can't say like, oh, it didn't do anything for me because I wasn't, you know, I can't say that, but I just loved that it, in those 10 months, it was all hands-on. It was everything that you wanted to learn. Um, great internship opportunities while I was there. Um, growing up, Kevin Matthews, who was on um, AM 1000 in the loop in Chicago, a huge talk radio personality. Um, my, I grew up listening to him with my parents. Um, so it was like a dream come true. I got to intern for him um, while, I was, while I was there. So it was cool to have the Chicago internship opportunities while being at Illinois Center for Broadcasting. Um, and I was just really driven. I was a super nerd. I was also a little older, I guess. I was um, 23 by that point. Um, and I got the attendance award. <laughs> um, I was, yeah, I was definitely, yeah, definitely a nerd. Um, so when once I get something in my mind, it's just straight tunnel vision. So um, I took advantage of the um, job help that they give you uh, towards the end of your um, time at Illinois Center for, or sorry, Illinois Media School. Um, took advantage of that. And um, it just so happened that I got a full-time midday job um, in central Illinois in Decatur at a country station. And um, I bugged that guy. I remember um, I even, it, so the program director did afternoons and I remember calling him during his show. Like I was so annoying, but I got the job. So I don't know if I recommend doing that. Probably wouldn't work these days because the um, program director probably isn't doing a live show. Um, but that worked for me. I remember doing, I cringe now thinking about that. I did that, uh, but I was super determined and ended up getting that job full time. I was just, I couldn't believe that my first job was full time. Um, moved down there and um one of something that I always like to share. So while I was doing middays there on the country station in Decatur, um, at for then next media, um, and the VP of programming who lived out in California just was doing a tour of all of the markets. And he came to visit and we all had a chance to sit down and talk to him. And he, I'd only been there probably, probably four months, five months. And he said, so what are your aspirations? You know? And I said, well, I, I'm very grateful to have this job, but mornings is what I've always wanted to do. And, um, and he's like, okay. And lo and behold, he ended up having a conversation a couple of months later with um, a program director up in Kenosha, Wisconsin at a country station. And he said, Hey, you know, I'm looking for a co-host, a morning co-host. Do you know of anyone? And he's like, actually, there's a girl in our Decatur market who really wants to get into mornings. And he ended up contacting me and 
that's, I moved up to Kenosha and I did mornings on that country station. And then there was a rock station, uh, 95 Will Rock, which is in Kenosha across the hall. That morning co-host ended up leaving. And then I got approached by that program director and I went across the hall um, to be on that much larger station. And that's where I was for about seven years um, and then left for some family reasons and then um, ended up being hired back at our sister station in Waukegan, Illinois. And then that's where I was for five years and then made the jump to Rockford to be the program director. So in a nutshell, there's my story. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. You see, and I'm just going to tell you right now, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to be in this media industry, you cannot be married to just where you live. You oh, got to yeah. be willing to move. The jobs are out there, but you got to be willing to move. All right. So with that being said, Krista, yeah. how did you get from where you were to where you are? Well, I was going to school in La Crosse, Wisconsin to Viterbo where I was a theater major and my jam was uh, song parodies. I love Saturday Night Live and that's really wanted I, what I wanted to do with my life. Um, I was like, why are you not putting me on any, any plane? Like, <laughs> we just don't know where to put you. <laughs> like, but I'm getting money. Um, so in order for me to graduate college, I had to put on an acting recital and so that's what I that's what I did. I, I did what I wanted. And so I created these song parodies that had to do with like, I have a glass eye last time I went to S5. I made fun of that. I made fun of me having a red hair and I did all these things. And um, and it was in front of nuns. And uh, I'm surprised I was still in that <laughs> theater. But anyway, um, Dick Record, who actually was from Midwest Family Broadcasting, uh, he was a general manager at the, the radio stations out there knew my uh, director and he asked who I was, he goes, I want to put her on my morning rock show. And so that's how I got into radio. I fell into it and I knew nothing about radio. I just knew I had a loud mouth and, um, <laughs> and it was so much fun. It was, it was a lot of fun. And um, so I was there for at 95, seven, the rock um, for a year. And then I moved on. Um, I wanted to pursue the acting. So I took a break from there. And then um, I was living in Florida and I decided that I really wanted to move to Chicago and do the dream that I've always wanted to was, which was to audition for Second City. Mm -hmm. um, I, I got into Second City, although I thought it was the worst audition I ever did, but thank God I got in. Um, and I really had missed radio, but the one thing that we all need in order to get recognized was a demo. And I'm like, I don't got any of that. So I was like, I'm going to go back to school. I'm going to learn every single thing I possibly can. And that was the Illinois Center for Broadcasting. So, um, and it was a tremendous experience. Like Lisa said, um, just hands on. That's so, so important to get the hands on experience with the, um, the radio and the TV and to have that opportunity. Even though I had experience with the morning show, um, I also interned for B96, uh, which was a great opportunity and to meet Roxanne Steele, which I think is wow. a true woman, right? Uh, lady boss in this industry. And so during that time, like Philip was saying, you have to hustle, like you have to move. And so I remember um, my first, my first then job outside of there, I was working for a rock station in um, Oshkosh, Appleton Oshkosh. And for six months, I drove three hours there and back just for, for one airship for six months. Wow. Yeah. Right? And so that's where I got hired from Keemless Broadcasting. I worked for Keemless for uh, three years. I got hired to do nights. I did sales. Um, and then I, you know, I met my husband and then um, I really wanted to get back in mornings. And I just knew at that time there just wasn't an opening. So I had to make that decision um, to move. And so I got hired to do mornings in Kalamazoo, Michigan for eight years um, with 103.3 KFR which was Town Square Media. And then, you know, after that, then I moved to Madison, Wisconsin, where I got hired to do mornings in Madison, Wisconsin on 93.1 Jams. Um, and then my co-host at the time had moved on and I was like, well, this is my time. I wanted to, to host my own show. And so I went up to my boss and I said, Randy, I said, I really want to take over mornings, the show. And he goes, have at it. And so it turned into a Chris in the morning rush. And then after that, it then eventually evolved into the first, first, um, all female morning show in the state of Wisconsin. 
um, which I had such a great time um, doing and uh, being a part of. And so it's, it's just been a great ride. It's been a great ride. It's awesome. Fantastic. I, I've, I've got so many questions, but you guys, you guys are hitting so many things right now. So I need everybody to hear what Krista said. She went, what was the place that you went to and you didn't have a demo reel? Oh, um, oh well, I first landed in, yeah, lacrosse. And then when I left, I wanted to get back in radio, but I was like, how am I going to do that? No one know, can hear my stuff. I don't have a reel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, and, you know, so she had experience, came out of it with experience and still didn't have a demo reel and then came to school, uh, learned everything you needed to do to be able to put together a demo reel. And then you went back into the industry. So that's I can't stress to you all enough for those of you who are currently in school, your demo reel is everything. Your resume is everything. For those of you who've graduated, tighten up your demo reel. That's a real quick plug so we can keep you employed in this industry that we love so much. So. With that being said, I've got some questions out here and we're going to open the floor up. Reminder, again, housekeeping, it's 11 minutes past the hour. We've got 19 minutes before we have to wrap this up. So make sure you ask your question. Stop talking so our lovely guests can be able to answer the question. Tyler Campbell Allen, you have the floor. You got 20 seconds to ask your question. Go for it. Tyler. Campbell Allen. You there? Okay, let's go to She Howell, or is it Shy Howell? My bad. It's Shy. Can you Shy. hear me? Yes, okay. you got 30 seconds to ask your question. Go for it. I, I want to say a couple things first. I think it's amazing to see women in radio because I know it's really hard to do because it's definitely a male driven industry. Um, but going from being doing video to doing radio is something that I'm doing, but you guys have definitely stated several times it's a demo, you're real, and social media. So with me already having a platform somewhere else, is it easier to kind of get into radio doing so, or do I have to start from the very bottom and work my way up? Um, I'll say, so my, the, morning show host that I hired a couple of years ago, she was still in, she was in community college um, and approached me and mostly had a journalism type background, but her personality was so awesome. And we just saw so much potential in her. And now she is like a superstar. Um, she's the morning show co-host and um, she won like our influencer of the year for our for our uh, market uh, group of radio stations. Um, so you don't necessarily have to start at the bottom, but if you just end up meeting the right person and um, being able to state your case, like it, it, I, I'm having a hard time trying to say, do you know what I'm trying to say? <laughs> I do. I get it. I think it's awesome because it's more of when I had to find the confidence in myself. Um, I chose behind the camera because I love being behind and no one, like I'm not being seen, yeah. but it's like now I don't really have much of a choice to take that initial step if I really want to be in this entertainment portion, you know, so I've been doing great things. I'm loving what I'm doing, but it's like now I really want to take it like serious and go forward with it and not have it as a hobby, but have it as like my number one and that's it. So yeah, that's been that's the kind of thing. But being here today Thank definitely so gave much. me everything I really need to start on. That's from good. My real I'll tell you demo. the um, I've had my uh, my uh, sister stations that have been looking for like female co-hosts. There's hardly any, so I know that there's females listening right now. Um, that we are really looking for, you know, driven females, and I know it's hard. Like a lot of them to be able to move. Like if you've already started your family and you are rooted somewhere, that's the hardest part um, to be able to move. Um, but I just, I just know, like, don't be afraid, females. They, they are hungry for you in this industry. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I know. Like, thank you so much, Shai. Go for like, it, Krista. I was just gonna say, but Lisa's saying, anytime someone comes up to me or messages me, they're like, "Hey, do you know a female? Hey, do you know a yep. female?" They're so hard to find. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. 
All right, we're going to slide this over to, let me see here. Um, is it Kara Van Meter? Kara Van Meter, are you there? I am here. Go so, ahead. You have your question. You got 30 seconds to ask it. Go for it. Okay. So my question is, when searching for brand deals, do you reach out to them or do they reach out to you? Go ahead, Krista. Oh, sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. Typically, it's the, the sales rep that brings these opportunities to you. They'll ask us, hey, who are you guys interested in endorsing? Um, or, you know, uh, or if you're seeing, if, you know, if you, you take a stance on social media, on Instagram, I know people uh, get, you know, reached out to by other clients and are like, hey, will you influence, will you endorse me? I've got people that... Um, that I don't necessarily work on the radio for, but have asked me, hey, would you mind doing a post for me? And, you know, I don't know if that answers your question, but. Okay. Yeah, so like, basically like say I'm start, I, I run my own company, I won't, I have my own company and I'm searching for brand deals for my company mm. for, you know, social media, things like that, things that I do um, my, for my team. Um, like, if you own your own company, then you got to go find that business. <laughs> right. That's what I'm saying. Do I reach out to them or do I wait for them to come to me? Oh, oh reach to them. Yeah, I would think reach out to them. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Welcome. All right. Africa. Africa Bethel. Hey. All oh, right. Sorry. You sound happy. Good for it. Yeah. You have 30 seconds. To ask your I was question. so excited. I was waiting. I was waiting for this. Okay. <laughs> So um, I am currently a student at Colorado Media School, um, and I did try to apply to my first job um, while I'm still in school. <laughs> that yeah. probably wasn't the best thing. So going forward, I guess I've, I've been listening to what you guys are saying, so I got a lot of great advice. But um, being technically like a newbie in the entertainment industry, what is your best advice as far as applying to jobs? Because I kind of made sure that I worked on my cover letters. I thought I had a very good demo and I thought I presented myself very well, um, but the job ended up getting filled. So what's your advice on applying to like the next job? Um, so how much time do you have left in school? Um, I graduate December 8th. Okay, no, then that's not, no, I don't think you're too early applying for jobs. I think that's great. Cause I probably started a few months before, um, I was graduating as well. Um, so what was the first job? What, what was the first job that you applied for? The first job that I applied for was chaos 1075. Um, I do have a couple of jobs that I'm trying to look into as well. Like, um, jobs for iHeartRadio as well. Yeah. What kind of positions are you looking for? Um, so the one that I tried to apply for chaos 1075, K Chaos 1075 was a part-time position as a co-host. And okay. then for iHeartRadio, um, it is like a news reporter and then a traffic and weather reporter. Okay. Um, and so you got passed up for both of those? Um, I haven't started applying for the iHeartRadio job just yet. Okay. Um, well, certainly do not give up. You already have a great delivery. I can already tell from listening to you. Um, so do you think, do you think you need to work on your demo? Um, so or do you feel good about it? I know I, I feel like from, for each company that I applied to, I definitely want to make a new demo so I can improve myself each time. I don't want to use the same one. Yeah. But I do feel confident in myself and my voice. I have been working on my news reporter voice. <laughs> so good. I feel good. very confident in that as well. So does your demo have like where you're doing traffic and, and weather? Um, yes. Um, I tried to do one for New Zealand as well, mm -hmm. which was a little bit weird. Um, yeah. But huh? I, I'm getting a little bit more comfortable with like news terms and getting a little bit more comfortable with like weather and traffic and how to like deliver it because it's very different than just like a talk show radio. Yes, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I would just keep practicing that every single day. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I would keep practicing that every single day. Um, and it probably wouldn't hurt to do a little video 
like a little TikTok video, even if you were um, pretending you were on TV doing the weather, that wouldn't hurt. Oh, okay. That's awesome advice. You know, because I think like I, like I said, like as a, as a program director, if I see someone comfortable on video and I can see their personality, that would stand out. I do make TikToks, um, Perfect. but it's kind of like random TikToks. Yeah. <laughs> I should probably do more catered towards like a job that I would like to apply to. Yeah. I think that, I think that'd be a way just to help yourself stand out. Of course. Thank you. Cool. You're welcome. Africa, I would also say, look at your, um, I don't know what, um, if you're looking for large markets, but starting in a small market where you can learn everything, mm -hmm. is probably a good, uh, you know, start too. Cause some of these larger markets, right. They're, they're yeah. a little bit harder. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Africa. So we have right now nine minutes left. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this now our lightning round where the person we at, who's asking the question, you have uh, seven seconds to get to your point, which means you have enough time to ask your questions. And then ladies, you have about 20 seconds to answer it. So that way we can get as many people to answer in these last uh, eight minutes or actually now we got eight minutes. So that means we've got six minutes. So with that being said, let's go to the next person, which is, well, Linda, I see your hand up. We can go to you. That was an accident. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I wasted, I wasted 10 seconds. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. So we have Daryl Henderson. Daryl Henderson McKnight, you have a question. Seven seconds. Ask your question. Hi, so my question is, how do you feel <clears throat> that the current mainstream media space has been evolving in this day and age with everything that's been happening for queer individuals? Um, I that feel- seven so seconds. I'm oh, sorry, so yeah, but that's basically it. All right. Um, I think it's way open to that. I think Krista can probably um, agree with me in that way. Um, as a matter of fact, my morning co-host, she is of the LGBTQ plus uh, community. Um, and we've actually, because of that, we have um, reached into that market actually. And we've done, we do a, it's called our pride point one K that we do every June. Um, and we raise money for a local charity um, that helps the LGBTQ uh, community. So um, it is the, the perfect timing right now for you. All right, Krista, Absolutely. you've got 20 seconds. Go for it. Oh, yes. Uh, love it. Um, and, Krista. you know, our stations okay. are, are are big, too, with Pride. So we're always uh, showcasing uh, the Pride Fest that's going on and, you know, so much more. So just go for it. Oh, yeah. Love. love. Yeah. Express Expressing yourself is everything. Mm -hmm. All right. Alonzo Bush, you got seven seconds to ask your question. Alonzo, seven seconds. Uh, hello. Um, I was wondering, is it good being like a radio host to go outside of your state? Because I'm from Colorado, but I reside in Illinois and they say they like me because I sound clear, I guess. I, guess. I don't I don't know. I don't I'm trying to figure out. Or like a non-regional dialect. Correct. Yeah. Right. Krista, Lisa. Yes, go, 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 go yeah, for it. Like I'm, 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 <laughs> go, go, go. Like I moved to Michigan and they're like, get rid of that Wisconsin accent. I'm like, great, I <laughs> will. 30 years done. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, go. Thank you so much, Alonzo. Thank you so much. Robert Balaker, you've got seven seconds. All right, go for it. All right. When it comes to internet radio compared to FM radio, do you think it's just as good on a resume, like the experience wise? I mean, if the content is what you're saying is good, that's all that matters. Um, so if what you did on your internet radio and then sent on your demo is something that could transpire on FM, that's that's great. Like I said, the morning co-host I have, she had zero, um, she had zero, she'd never been on radio before and she's wonderful. So yeah, I, I'd say it's just as good. Hey, Krista? Yeah, I totally agree. Like with Lisa, you know, you're going to shine through if you're just being your authentic self. Like Lisa, she hires people. Like she'll know within like five seconds if she's like drawn to you. So mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
All right. Tyler Campbell Allen, we're going to try to come back to you. Are you there? Tyler Campbell Allen, are you there? No. I am here. 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 Right, you got seven <laughs> seconds. Go for it. You got seven seconds. Go for it. Okay. I am in DMP right now in the Cincinnati, Ohio Media School. And I was wondering uh, with music, what should I look for? You mean as far as like what genre to what kind type of radio um, station? Um, like, cause I can I can produce the music and make the music, and also, uh, I do DMP as well. And I was wondering what should I look for for like background and all that kind of stuff. Hmm. I don't. So know. like music, as far as like in your in your background, or are you are you looking to be in the music industry? Yes. Oh, in the oh well, gosh, there's Live Nation. I mean, there's right there's mm. if that's what you're looking for to work in the industry. I know there's oh. some other right. <laughs> trying to think of the other. <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. That's all right. Well, Tyler, you know, thank you so much. You got Live Nation and uh make sure you're registered. Ask Cat BMI. Make sure you get your music registered. Uh, but thank all you so right. much. Thank all you. Right. Ladies, we got three minutes. So before we close this out, um, what advice would you give to the people that are listening right now? Um, let's open the floor. Krista, you have the floor and then we'll pivot to Lisa. Stay true to who you are. Be vocal about what you want. Um, I know it can be scary, but you know what? Doing that is going to do everything for you. Learn as much as you can be so they cannot fire you they cannot let you go because you know so much um and and especially for the women girls this is your time so go on out there and and use mm -hmm. your resources use lisa lisa hires network is everything so i'm someone you can talk to like that is so important i think networking is everything you never know who you are going yeah. to meet uh and they'll be like yep we want you so 100%. Yeah, 100% what Krista said. Um, and it's cliche, like never burn a bridge, they say in radio. And, and they say that for a reason, because the same circulating all over, you know, the Midwest in the regions, the same people end up, you know, and you could be looking for a job sometime and then you really want this job. And then you find out the manager is someone that you had a bad experience with, you know, something like that. So just um, so yeah, never burn a bridge. Um, and just know, like I've reiterated a couple times, um, that it's not about the experience. We're looking for um, what can't be taught. And if we see that you have what can, what you know, what you have, what can't be taught, that's what you know. That that's who we want, and we can easily teach you the the uh, technicalities and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, and also what Krista said, don't be afraid to go for what you want. That conversation I brought up a while ago that I had with that VP of programming almost 20 years ago is the reason that I'm where I'm at now. So don't be afraid. Great. Well, thank you ladies so much. Lisa, thank you so much. Krista, thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate you guys being, both of you being here right now. It is 29 minutes past the hour. We have stopped successfully on time. And my name is Philip Bufford and I am your facilitator and I hand it back over to you, Linda. Oh, Philip, you are so awesome. Didn't he do a great job? He's so good. And you ladies are just so awesome. It's like you've known each other for a very, very long time. Um, I think that you dropped a lot of good advice into the group. And for everybody that's attending, you can find both of these wonderful women on LinkedIn. Um, and if you have demos or resumes that you'd like to forward or get some feedback from, just feel free to send them to me and I'll make sure to forward them on for you. And I can connect you, but it's just easier at this stage of the game to go that direction. Um, as we get ready for Thanksgiving, I'm so grateful with a grateful heart for all of you for being here and joining us. You women are fabulous. I learned from you tonight, so I love to learn from a pro to be a pro. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs> Until we meet again. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Oh, they're sweet.